Hey guys, it's the Med Studio and today we will be looking at the different types of head injuries. In particular, this will include extradural hematomas. So firstly, before we get started, let's have a quick look at the anatomy of the head. Here in this image, you can see that there are several different layers. We have the scalp, then the skull and the various layers of the matter. The first is the dura matter, then the arachnoid matter and the pia matter closest to the brain tissue. The dura matter itself is split into different sections within the head. For example, this includes the folk cerebri, which separates the cerebral hemispheres, and the tentorium cerebelli, which separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum and the brainstem. Between these layers, we have spaces where blood can collect due to trauma, for example. The space above the dura mater is known as the extra-dural space. Then we have the sub-dural space below and the sub-arachnoid space below the arachnoid matter. So working our way from outside to inside, let's start off with the extra-dural hematoma. So this is when there is a collection of blood between the skull and the dura. Some of the causes include trauma, things like a fall or a blow to the head. It often occurs in the weakest part of the skull, known as the terion, as this area is very thin. Here we have the middle meningeal artery, so often this is the artery that's damaged during an extradural hematoma. Classically, patients will present with loss of consciousness initially and then will regain consciousness and then lose consciousness again. This period where they regain the consciousness is known as a lucid interval. The reason for this is because the damage to the skull has caused a hematoma, which is then pushing the dura away from the skull. Slowly, the hematoma just keeps expanding, pushing the brain, causing it to herniate around the tentorum cerebelli. Because the parasympathetic fibres of the third cranial nerve runs here, the patient can get a fixed, dilated pupil. The imaging of each of the different types of cranial hematomas can vary, and it is very specific to each type. So, extradural hematomas can present as a biconvex, hyperdense collection around the surface of the brain. They present in the shape because the blood collection is limited by the suture lines of the skull. You can remember this because it is almost like a lemon shape or a lens-like shape. There is an E in lemon and there's also an E in extradural. Apart from a head CT, it's important to complete some initial investigations. This includes FBCs and Eusenes, which are looked for the baseline bloods, as well as to understand the extent of the bleed. CRP can help us to identify any ongoing infections that might present in this way. Clotting is also used to identify any blood clotting disorders within the patient. Group and save is required later on because the blood may be required should there be a greater blood loss than expected, especially because these patients need surgery. Most extradural hematomas are traumatic where the blood can start pooling in the head. 
Here, the definitive management is craniotomy and it's recommended in order to remove the extra blood that's pooling. And that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you guys found it really useful. Please remember to like, subscribe and comment below. And follow me on Instagram at the Medstudier.